Let's look at the scripture. Mark chapter 4, verse 32. I'm sorry. Sorry. Before we read, before we read Mark chapter 4, let me tell you a few things. The enemy has put things in place to obstruct you. Advancing in life implies, implies crossing to the other side. Tell somebody, the other side. The other side. There is no way God will make you all that you were meant to be in just one position. Position is not like physical. I mean, talk about quality and value of life and productivity and results and experience. There is no way you can become all of God's plan just the way you have always been 20, 30 years ago. To get to the next level, you need to cross to the other side. Tell somebody, the other side. <laughs> Sir, there is marriage, but there is marriage on the other side. Sir, there is business, there is business on the other side. The other side of life is where you are going to, from where you are. The other side is the larger place. The other side is the better place. The other side is God's will for you continuously. That if you get to the other side, after that, there is the other side that you need to go to. And to move from one side to the other side, Sir, the devil has put things in place to obstruct you or at least to delay. The devil knows if you cannot be stopped completely, let what should take you one year take you 20 years. Let's hope that within the 20 years we can still find a way of destroying you and you don't ever achieve it. Because what is delayed, if care is not taken, will never manifest, will never take off. See some people start a project, delay, 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 delay until it becomes obsolete. That the time you wanted to build the house, your plan was the best, the latest plan. 20 years later, you are ashamed of building that house. Go to a wet housing. Houses were like the definition of houses in Uyo. And the people who lived there were the wealthiest people in Uyo. If you go and look at it, and they give you for free to live in. Now some people will not accept it free, though they are looking for house. But they are in a wet housing. They are only good enough to be demolished for something else to be built. So if somebody had the plan of that house 50 years ago, started building in 2024, if somebody finishes that house, he will not say he has achieved anything. Who will live there? So there is evolution. What you were supposed to do 20 years ago, after that, it is obsolete. Even if you do, it is not count, it's no longer counted as valuable. That's what the devil tries to do. If I cannot stop you, let me slow you down. Rise to your feet and lift up your two hands. Say, you devil. You cannot stop me. You will not stop me. And then you will not slow me down. I say, tell the devil, you devil. You will not stop me. And I will not allow you to slow me down. In Jesus' name. Be seated. Just make sure you don't allow him. Or because if you allow him, he's already working on it. There are storms to cross from one side to the other side of life. There are storms and there are contrary winds arranged to confront your advancing in life. Once you want to move from one level to another, know that there are storms. If currently you are sitting down, there are no storms because you are not going to anywhere. You have given up on going to nowhere. If right now you are so afraid of storms, you will never go to anywhere. You have to become storms friendly in order to advance. That when it becomes terrible, you don't change your mind. You keep going. Mark chapter 4 Verse 35 to 41. And then we'll read the second scripture, Mark 6, 45 to 51. First, Mark 4, 35 to 41. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Let us. Now pay attention. He said, let us. He's the one who suggested it. He's the one who knew that there was need to go to the other side. I'm not interested in preaching today. I just came to just came to warm up your mind that there is a place you are crossing over to and you need help. And that if you are in a storm, you know that there are ways of dealing with a storm. 
In case you are not going to anywhere, you also get this information and put it in your pocket and keep staying where you are staying. There's no problem. But me, I was sent to talk. Talk, I will. Let us cross. It is the will of God that you cross. It is my plan as I preach that you will cross. Sir, I have crossed and I'm still crossing. I have crossed and I'm still crossing. I'm not going to stop crossing. Oh man, I'm crossing. Seven years after, I'm crossing. Just try, just look at, just stay and look at me because I'm crossing. Say, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along. They took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great wind storm arose. No warning. He was waiting. And many things that they don't need. There are certain things that will happen in your life. No prophet will tell you. Those of you who move from witchcraft coven to witchcraft coven thinking you are looking for prophet, you actually look like a witch because of the places you go to. Because all they see for you is witches and see your enemy. They don't see your head that is not moving to anywhere. And so you now become like a witch. I'm sorry. So this one, I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you I used to be a calibrist. I apologize today for all the stumbling. If this one is a stumbling, maybe one year later I will apologize over it, but let's finish it. No prophet will tell you certain storms that are coming. If prophets will tell people storm, Abadja will have known that Apple will kill him. Because he was surrounded by so many seers. Sir, the first son of one of the greatest men preaching the gospel in our time just died like that, went to bed and did not wake up. And this man speaks into people's life and give word of knowledge accurately every day. No prophet told him his son will go to bed and wake up. And he will tell his son, don't go to bed tonight because if you go to bed, you will not wake up. Be careful. There are storms. The life of your father before God does not compensate for your own lack of life. I'm just giving you a gift to There are storms that will break out. There are storms that will just make up their mind. You know, meteorolo meteorologists, <laughs> meteorological center, they predict hour by hour for weeks and months about weather condition, or weather forecast today. Is the highs and the lows in the middle of the world, there will be thunderstorm arising from Sahel and moving up north of Africa and then moving towards Arabian to the Peninsula. There will be showers and thunderstorm around Oman and Bahrain. But in Eastern Europe, <laughs> sir, after all of that, things can suddenly break out that nobody knew. That is why we have. Aircraft that took off and crashed. With all the sophistication of technology. So if you don't have the life in God, just keep looking for prophets. These prophets say, find out how is their own life. What is it about them that they have not yet seen? If they say, guy, get prophet, so prophet, in your kingdom, then so, then twin. Seven years later, I'm still changing. I'm sorry. Sorry. But you know I'm not sorry, right? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please, take your life in God and live. And prepare for the storm when it comes. That's all I want to say. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into their boat so that it was already feeling. Let's leave it there. Let's go to Mark chapter 6, verse 45. Let's wrap this up. Mark 6, 45 to 51. 
Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat. The first one is, he told the disciples, let's go to the other side. And he was with them in the boat. While all this was happening, he was sleeping, but in the boat. This time around, what is happening? Immediately, he made, he's the one who made it. He made his disciples get into the boat. When Jesus is in the boat, do you expect storm? Yes. That's what the scripture says. So being born again is not being storm free. If you move from church to church, go for us, you will be back. But before you settle in that church, boom more. When last go get back go for us, you will be surprised. That maybe a dead pastor might buy my game. You know, we just came back from burying pastor's father. You say, pastor's father. Okay, that's not the church. Let me go to another church. A dialless, <laughs> a dialless church. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that would be very serious this morning. So I not there. There is no dialless church. Just when people know that there's no sickness free place, there's no storm place, there's no storm free place. Jesus was in the boat, suddenly there was a big storm, and this one is immediately he made his disciples to get into the boat and go before him. He go before him to the other side. So, two things about going to the other side Jesus is with you. Or is going before Jesus. To Bethsaida, I was tempted to sit on Bethsaida. I said, no, let's not talk about Bethsaida today. While he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. You can't imagine. Jesus is praying on the mountain. And his disciples that he sent along, they are going. And his prayer will not stop stopping. So if you accuse me that my prayer is not stopping many storms, let's start judging Jesus first. I didn't write the Bible. This is how life is. My work is not to bring people and gather and I become their God. My fasting and my prayer, make sure there is no storm. My work is to prepare you so that when the storm comes, you handle it. That's what God called me to do. And you will not convert me to the pastor according to your heart. God says I will give you pastors according to my heart. Who will pastor you with knowledge and what? Understanding. Your goal is to convert a pastor to, uh, to your mind. Who will do according to your knowledge and understanding? Now, verse 47, when evening came, the door of your spirit is open. That's what I feel. Now, when evening came, the boat was in the middle of what? And Jesus is praying. And he was alone on the land praying. He was not distracted. Then he saw them straining at what? I mean, while they were praying, they were being strained. He was praying and they were straining. They were praying and he was praying and they were struggling. He was praying and they were suffering. He was praying. The people he sent are struggling at rowing, trying to move forward and asking themselves, Is it not the Lord that asks us? Is the Lord no longer with us? Does He know all things? Is the one who sent me into this marriage? Is the one who said, well, Is the one who told me this man is my husband? How will the man that he said is my husband treating me like he's not coming home? Do you make home comfortable for him? The Lord is praying. And you are straining. He sends you there. Oh, look at the job the Lord gave to me. The office he said was my own. Now this office is staffed of fund, no funding. My boss is against me. Did the Lord really see well? Is the Lord the one who told me this? Yes, the Lord told you to go there, but the Lord didn't say you should be arrogant towards your boss, to behave to your boss as if you know everything. So you are paying the price. The Lord sees many things happening. Even though you are, he's involved. If you can hear me, say, I can hear you. 
This is a secret of God giving you a job and you suffer like God is not involved. There are many things he sees and he allows to happen. So be careful. That's why wisdom is important. Knowledge is important. Then he saw them straining at rowing for the wind was what? Yes. Once you get married after a wedding, there are winds, contrary winds waiting in marriage. If you didn't prepare for it, they will make you regret the gift of God. Do you know when he was with them and the wind started and water filled everywhere? He rebuked them. See, people of little faith, that means he expected them to know more. If you don't know more, storms will humble you. Those of you who run away from learning the word of God, you don't study, you don't pray. Come here on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like we are trying to talk about. For you, you are not involved. On the day of storm, you will look for something. Oh, you will look for a prophet. Can I tell you something? On the day of trouble, every prophet is under pressure to tell you lies. Why? They want to be relevant. That's why if you go to three churches, people tell you three different things. Sometimes doctors see three different things. If you are not careful, doctor can recommend you die. They recommend surgery when all you need is drip. Why? You are, they are under pressure. And they have to be doctors. So doctors are in the habit of prescribing and injecting. So on the day of pressure, if they are not careful to have the discipline of, the, of, of professionalism. They will do things just to impress you. The same way with pastors. The same way with mighty men of God who are known to be, to be prophets. They are under pressure to impress you. To make you feel... That now that you have come to this place, the law will surely solve it. They themselves, they don't know what they are dealing with, but they pretend they can know. So be careful. On the day of your storm, those who helped you yesterday can kill you today. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services. Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibum State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this Grace Revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.